Well, thanks for coming back and staying with us. Um, Lynn, we've got a really, really special guest to share with, with all of you. Um, professionally, uh, he is Dr. Robert Moe. He is the coordinator of title programs uh, in our school district. So, and, and among those title programs is, is the, the largest Title I program. We have 11 of our campuses in Humble ISD who uh, serve student populations uh, in excess of 50% uh, being eligible for free or reduced meals at school, so uh, far above 50% poverty uh, yes. that, th that they're serving. In any event, um, that in and of itself is very interesting and important and fascinating, but, but what really is uh, fascinating to me about Rob is Rob is a, is a historian. He is an author, and if I may, I'm, I'm just going to hold it up. Uh, very recently, uh, Dr. Mo Robert authored a book on the history of Humble uh, from the 1870s through the 1940s. It's called Images of America, Humble. Rob, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. And I, ha I have this book, I have read this book. It is, we have such a historically rich uh -huh. community. We really do. Um, but what, what I'm very curious about, and I don't think I've ever asked you this question, so I'm glad to have the chance to do that. So. What even motivated you to take on something like this? Because I know firsthand you have spent months and months and months researching. Years. <laughs> Years. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, in my spare time, I'm a genealogist. And so I was doing a genealogy project on my parents, who both graduated from Charles Bender High School. Uh -huh. And um, I was writing a history, you know, their genealogy, and decided that I'd write a little bit of history about Charles Bender High School and Humble ISD. And as I started doing that research, I started realizing there's, there's no good history of Humble ISD. It's all contradictory. And so I spent a year mm -hmm. researching the history of the school district. Wow. I said, okay, this is really interesting. So I decided to write a book on the school district. And as I did that, I had to write a chapter on the city of Humble. And as I started researching their history, it's, there's not a good history, it's all contradictory. So I spent the next two years researching the history of them. It just it kept expanding. It wow. does, though. When yeah. you're doing genealogical research, one thing leads to another to another. And, you and it never stops. Whole new ever <laughs> you're right, right. So you have family ties in Humble. Mm -hmm. Both my parents uh, were from Humble. And so my did, uncles and aunts are from Mumble. Did you research the area of cemeteries oh, yeah. and city records and things? Every, si or? every single thing there was. Uh, like I said, start at the school district and then I became associated with the Mumble Museum and yeah. then started just researching everything. Mm -hmm. And most of the histories of Mumble that have been printed in the past, they're based on folk stories. Here's what right. my parents told me and so on. I decided to do a little different. I went to go find facts. So I went to the Harris County Archives, the Texas State Archives, spent three years there researching what data I could find. So everything in the book, it's a little bit different spin on the history of Humble and the school district than we thought of, but this one is verified with facts. And anyone who has any interest in Humble or in history needs a copy of it. Definitely. Where can they get it? Uh, actually, you can get it from Barnes & Noble or some oh, of the other okay. stores around here, but the Humble Museum sells them. Uh, oh, good. I, I kind of co-authored it with the Humble Museum. Okay. And so it's, a, it's one of the uh, things they sell to support the museum. Good deal. Well, that's an important uh, point that you make because the museum maintains some amazing uh, records mm -hmm. and materials and things. And we're one of the few cities that actually has a museum exactly. dedicated solely to the city. We can thank Lillian McKay yes, and her hard can. work for that museum because they did an amazing job collecting the, uh, things yeah. for the museum. And they've done a good job. It's uh, been around for about 40 years and yeah. they've preserved. If they hadn't been around, those things would not have been preserved. Exactly. Well, well, Rob, you are the expert historian, so I have to ask because I have been curious forever. And I meant it, what I said earlier. I, I mean, I just think our community is, is so historically rich uh, with, um, with people and events and activities and so forth. Here's my question. Moonshine Hill. Yeah. What is the history of Moonshine, Moonshine Hill? Moonshine Hill's where oil was that. first discovered yeah. in Humboldt in 1904. You know, Texas first discovered oil basically in 1901 with the spindle top discovery, which changed the face of oil because before that, um, oil was based in Pennsylvania and it's the kind of, it had to be scooped out of the ground. With spindle top, it actually was under such pressure it shot through the derrick, creating a new term for oil production called gusher. gusher. After spindle top, they went around looking for salt domes. And there's a salt dome under Moonshine Hill, and they began drilling for oil there in 1904, struck it in November, and that was the center of oil production for, for actually three decades in Humble. Wow. But there were some moonshiners around there. There are, and there, <laughs> the, we get back to that fact part again, yeah. because if you'll read what people will write, Moonshine Hill was named because people brewed moonshine there. 
No. We don't even see that word till 1907. Mm -hmm. uh, before then, it was an area called Eccles Ridge. In 1904, the company that struck oil was called the Moonshine Oil Company. Mm -hmm. And that was the name that got adapted for that area, um, Moonshine Hill. There you go. We learned something, partner. That's right. <laughs> and I always love this. I mean, I love history in the area. So that's an interesting fact. Are there other little known facts that people don't know about Humble? Actually, uh, there's a very interesting one. Um, the earliest land that was given out in Humble was actually given out while we were part of Austin's colony. Austin's colony was huge. It covered like 19 uh, counties in the state. Humble was part of that. Mm -hmm. We have two, in fact, the largest single land grant in the entire Harris County is in the Humble area and it was given as part of Austin's colony. Mm -hmm. But the first real grant, which is after Texas became a state, was one of the first ones given to a guy named uh, Joseph Dunman. And people have kind of forgotten who he, uh, he was. He was in Austin's colony, but he was, when uh, the Alamo was under siege and Colonel Travis sent out riders to go get reinforcements, he was the rider that went to Liberty and then on to Anahuac. Mm -hmm. Well, he lived here in Humble. I'll be darned. So, does any of his family still live around? Actually, I, I, I've met a few of the descendants. They don't have the Dunman name anymore because they were mm -hmm. through the daughters, but yeah, a few of them are actually still in the area. Wow. Boy, that is great. I mean, mm. it's fascinating when you start doing research. It's, it's rich and, in history and, in this area. Right. And Texas history is so interesting anyway because of the characters. Right. Yeah. So, are there any interesting characters we should know about from this area? No, but... Um, Oh, let me, t let me take back. Yes. Uh, the, the most interesting one is actually Pleasant Humble. Whenever you, yeah. you talk about Pleasant Humble and you read about him, you get the idea that this is some little simple farmer, mm -hmm. moved here, you know, did everything. He wasn't. He was a politician. Um, when he moved here in 1870, he became part of the Harris County Commissioner's Court. There's only four people in the whole county on that court, and they decide what goes on in Harris County. He was one of them. Uh, when we, we needed the post office, he was the one that started the post office. Later became Justice of the Peace. This is not a simple farmer. Uh -huh. This is a lifelong politician. And when you start realizing that, you totally change your image of what he did for the area. He did great things, but he's not a simple farmer. No. <laughs> well, there have been some really great characters. So Hayden McKay is a great yes, character. Yes, I, I love mean, Dr. McKay. He, he was a, a fun guy, but he was just a character and did a great deal for the way the boundaries of Humble were yeah. laid out as well. And his third generation doctor is for that fact. Too. His father was a doctor right. here in Humble, and his father was a doctor back, and I can't remember the state they came from, but it was, it's a lifelong family of doctors. Wow. Well, Fascinating. They're, they're furiously yes. doing this. We're making them nervous. Yeah, We're running out of time, but we could spend hours. I could, yeah. As you have spent years. And yes. Rob, thank you so much. I mean, this is um, what, a, what a service, truly, to, to all of our community and, and, and all of the generations um, who literally made Humble. Um, the community and what it is today. So thank you so that much. History. I'm excited about it. I'm running out and getting a copy oh, of the book. Fun. Really, Absolutely. It's a, it's and I think you should too because you, that's something you got to have yeah, in this very, area. Very interesting read. A great right. present to give someone too. So stay with us, Rob. Thanks again. By the way, he tremendous administrator as well. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.